Shut up and sit down. Hello everyone, I am the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you for watching, welcome to my channel. Uh, so today I was watching a video by Joe Telling, um, the 3D printing nerd, and uh, he put a challenge out to the interwebs uh, to create your own fidget spinners. Um, and if you remember from um, a month or so ago, two months ago, I was printing a lot of, a lot of these three uh, these um, uh, fidget spinners, trying to get uh, dial in the, the settings of my printer, uh, uh, and I finally narrowed it down to some over extrusion, uh, self inflicted over extrusion, as it were. So, um, so what I say, uh, Joel, uh, challenge accepted. Uh, so let's let's go off and let's design a. a, a a spinner and let's see what I can do. I'm gonna whip something up and uh, and uh, maybe uh, uh, Joel if you're lucky enough, uh, I'll send you one. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so here we are in Fusion. Uh, this is a blank design. First thing I want to do is I want to change my units to be millimeters. I normally work in inches, but in this case we're gonna work in millimeters. Uh, start by creating a sketch here on the uh, XY plane. And the first thing we want to do is create a circle. Uh, we're going to do it on the origin here. Uh, and it's going to be, oops, I want to dimension it to be 22.05 millimeters. So the, the bearing is 22 millimeters and the uh, 0.05 is going to give us just a little bit of extra uh, play to get the bearing in there. I found they, they can get uh, pretty, pretty tight. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to do an offset. Rather creating a second circle, we're just going to do an offset so that that will guarantee the symmetry um, in the center of this point here. So now, just take note, uh, this is dimension one and this is dimension two. Uh, we're gonna use those two dimensions in just a moment to help size and move things around. So next thing we wanna do is we wanna create a, a circumscribed polygon. Uh, we're gonna snap here to the z-axis, or to the, the, I'm sorry, the y-axis here um, and there as well. And then we are going to dimension this guy, um, and it is going to be 0.75 inches plus 0.05 millimeters. Now in Fusion, you can specify any units you want in these formulas, um, and it'll compute uh, the the base dimensions, which is in millimeters. So in this case, that is a 19.10 uh, millimeters. All right. So next thing, we are going to move this. Uh, down by uh, setting a, a dimension here between uh, the, the center point and the two uh, artifacts. So we're going to use the dimensions of the circle here, which is D1. We want the radius, which is a, a D1 uh, divided by 2, uh, plus the offset, which is D2. So now that would put it right at the top of this point here, uh, which is not what we want. We want to now add in this distance which is D3 divided by 2. And then we want to add in uh, enough for the offset for the top part, which we haven't done yet. Um, and then the offset uh, just from the part to part. So in that case, it's going to be D2 times 2. So we're going to use that 2 millimeter distance there. And see what you see here is we got a gap here of now 4 millimeters. And then we can now offset this guy by uh, D2. If you ever wanted to change the thickness of these parts, you just go in and modify D2 and everything will recompute itself. Uh, okay, so now we're gonna add some, uh, what I'm gonna call some interesting kind of uh, things to it. We're gonna create a circle here, a uh, 15 millimeter circle. And then we're gonna create another circle over here, which is also uh, actually, we want to uh, dimension it and then say, click on that guy, D6. Okay, so let me slide this, kind of line it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to align these circles on the side. And what they're going to do is they're going to actually connect uh, the top hex part with the bottom round part. So to do that, we are actually going to use the tangent tool. Uh, click on the circle we want to move and then click on uh, the uh, part here. So it creates a tangent here between these two parts. I think the order is important. I think you have to click on uh, the part you want to move first. Um, and then click on the part you want it to snap to. Um, I don't know that for a fact, but that seems to be the case. So there you go. So now you'll notice uh, when I put these, uh, uh, these circles together and we, we tangent, uh, made a tangent here, it actually closed the part so you can actually extrude this. And that's what we are looking for. Uh, next, uh, we want to add a little bit of flare. 
Uh, so we are going to put in an arc. Um, actually, before we do that, we want to create and we want to bisect uh, the circles. So we're going to create a line down the center here of the circle. Um, and then we're going to hit X uh, to turn it into a construction line so we don't have to, uh, so it won't extrude. So L for line, we will hover over that circle so it snaps to it. You can see the little blue line so that we get uh, through the center there. And then we will select the line and hit X again. Okay, so now we want to go into arc. We want to do a three-point arc. And we are going to do an arc from the top to the bottom here. And then uh, we want to snap it to the center point so that the arcs are symmetric. And then there you go, we will do that. Right click, repeat three-point arc. Same exact process like that, boom, there you go. Okay, now D for dimension, we want to dimension this guy. Uh, so it's, uh, let's just go ahead and make it three millimeters. That looks uh, fairly beefy. If we made it four, what would it look like? Uh, even a little more beefy. Hmm. I think I like three, uh, so let's go with three. Three millimeters, all right, so that is a D8. So we go over here. I hit dimension again, we will dimension these two guys, and we will make them D8 so that they are symmetric. Okay, so, oops, I didn't want to stop the sketch yet. Okay, zoom back in. So now we're going to use the trim tool, you hit T, and we're going to trim away the parts that we don't need anymore. Uh, we're going to cut that off, cut that off, so we get these nice little kind of uh, Ben-Hur spikes, as you were, or ninja-esque spikes. Uh, we're going to cut this guy off, cut that off. Uh, we're going to cut the top of the circle. Um, and we actually don't need this part or this part anymore because they're all connected. And you can see, even though we trimmed away all these lines, we still have a solid body so we can still extrude it with no problem. Now, um, this is kind of a lot of mass in the middle. It looks kind of odd. Uh, I think I'm going to put uh, I think I'm going to put a rectangle there. Uh, so let's do this. Let's just draw a rectangle out, um, kind of right there, um, something like that, probably. Just kind of cradle. Excuse me, a hole in the middle. Um, that doesn't look too bad. So uh, let's dimension this guy to keep uh, some consistency here. Um, we want to make that to be D2. And then we will, okay, so now this is going to be, I don't have a flat line here. Um, let's, okay, so let's dimension from here to here. Now, what do we want this to be? We want this to be the radius, which is D1 divided by 2 plus D2, right? Okay, so that uh, 22.05 divided by 2 is going to be 11.025. Um, plus two millimeters, which is the thickness. Yes, 13.025, so there you go. We got two millimeters on the top and the bottom. Perfect. Uh, so now we want to center this guy uh, in between the left and the right uh, sides here. So we'll actually, let's dimension this uh, 13. Let's make it uh, 15 now. That's, well, hold on, let's, okay, let's draw a line in the middle. Um, so we can figure out where the midpoint is, uh, just like we did before uh, with the circles. We're going to create a construction line here, and then we can use the, let's see, horizontal parallel, I think, horizontal vertical. Click on the line, and then click on the circle, uh, over constrained. I don't know why it would be over constrained. Or is it, let's try coincident. Coincident. There we go. Coincident. All right. So now they're lined up on the same uh, the horizontal vertical space. The 15 millimeters. It doesn't look too bad. It's a little long. So let's go with uh, um, let's go with 12. Okay, so that's a little bit better. It gives a little bit of space in here. Um, this is not rocket scientist, uh, rocket science here. Um, make it big as small as you want. <laughs> um, so there you go. All right, so now we're done with the sketch.
uh, we can hit E to extrude this guy um, up the obligatory seven millimeters and there you go so that's kind of the first part with these nice sort of uh, spikes here it's gonna be interesting to see how this turns out uh, just like Joel we are going to create a pattern which is a circular pattern we're gonna do three here as well um, and select the axis which is the Z axis the Z axis there you go uh, interesting overlapping that's kind of cool looking Look, uh, kind of looks like what one of the uh, Middle Eastern flags with the little hook things here so we'll select these three bodies modify combine them um, it's a joint operation there you go now we're back down to one body and you have the final part uh, I think it looks uh, pretty interesting actually uh, this should be fun I have never uh, uh, I've never created my own, but I've never created one with, uh, with the nuts here, so this is uh, going to be fun. Okay. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, there is designing a fidget spinner in Fusion 360. I do encourage you to watch uh, Joel's video. Uh, he has also designed some things that are actually pretty cool looking. And I know fidget spinners are kind of taking over the 3D printing world in the inter internet. Um, but I was actually just uh, on a very long trip uh, overseas and uh, was uh, kind of surprised by the number of fidget spinners I saw with the kids in the airport. Um, and I actually saw them in, in a store recently uh, being sold for uh, five or six dollars each, which is uh, kind of interesting. But anyway, so I will link uh, to Joel's uh, video uh, let's see up there um, if you want to watch it uh, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up as always if you don't like it I would appreciate a thumbs up as well leave any questions and comments down below uh, and I uh, will hope to see you soon thanks everyone hey I almost forgot don't forget to hug each other more and high five